we're going to put some equations in sort of a nice algebraic form so that you have a tool that you can use to, to solve problems. All right, that's when, when, we're, when I'm talking about the equations of 1D kinematics, I'm referring to a specific subset of equations that you can use. OK, so before we do that, I just want to point out you know, a couple different types of motion. So really, we're going to deal with three types of motion when we're talking about kin kinematics. The first type of motion is constant, is motion with a constant position. Now, motion with a constant position is incredibly boring and not really worth wasting our time on um, because if you wrote down position as a function of time, you'd say it's something like, oh, x. And I guess we'll use x naught. The position doesn't change. If the position doesn't change, can the object that's moving or not moving have a velocity? No. And if the object doesn't have a velocity, then it doesn't have an acceleration. Right, so this is really boring motion. We're, we're not actually going to talk about constant position at all. That's sort of silly. I just want to sort of introduce the topic. <clears throat> all right, so the next type of motion, though, that we will deal with, and you have already, is motion at a constant velocity. All right? <clears throat> so motion at a constant velocity, we could certainly write down position as a function of time. We could write down velocity to fun as a function of time, but it's constant, so I just write down v0. If you have a constant velocity, do you have an acceleration? In, no. no, you do not. So acceleration is zero. OK, so the thing I left blank here was, what is position as a function of time? Who can tell me what position as a function of time is for an object that's moving at a constant velocity? There's two different ways you could do this. I think I wrote it down yesterday. All right, you can sort of use the basic definition of velocity, or you could do a little bit of calculus. Yeah. All right, initial position plus velocity times time. Good. So that is position as a function of time. And if you, if you want to double check this some way, that you, one way you can do it is check the unit. So of course, we have meters on the left-hand side. x naught is in meters. v naught is in meters per second. But you multiply that by a t, which is in seconds, you get meters. Okay. So we wrote this down yesterday uh, a little bit. It sort of came out of thin air. Let's just talk really quickly about where that came out. All right. So, one, one place that this came from is if you sort of rearrange things, if you solve for v naught, you'd see that you'd get delta x over t, which is our basic definition of, of, of average velocity. And that's fine. But what happens if you were to integrate this equation? right? Because the integral of v, the, uh, the time integral of v, so integral of v dt, well, that's the integral of v naught dt, right? So I'm just integrating the left and the right-hand side. What is this right-hand side? v naught is a constant, right? So what does this look like? Plus c, damn it. All right? Never forget the integration constant. That's what my calculus teacher used to say. All right, so plus c. Now, this looks pretty similar to that. And the reason that we can make the jump from x has got to be something like the initial position is because, well, c has to have the units of meters in order for the, the units to work out. So c is just what we, we just stick in x. That's x naught. Okay? So it just comes from, again, our basic definition of velocity and how that relates to position by the derivative or the integral, depending on which way you're going. That's where that comes from. Okay. So this is, I'm just erasing it. I don't know why. I don't know. Why, why am I even bothering? I don't know. All right, so that's where that, that's where that comes from. All right? We, we deal a little bit with constant velocity problems. Constant velocity problems occur in nature quite frequently. So, it, you know, it's, it's, re, it's not terribly interesting stuff, but, you know, it, it does happen. Um, but the most interesting type of motion is motion with constant acceleration, or the most interesting type of motion that we're going to deal with anyway. All right, motion of the constant acceleration. So in this case, we can write down an equation for x as a function of time. We can write down an equation for v as a function of time. And we know that a is some constant. We'll call it a naught or whatever. It doesn't really matter. <clears throat> All right. So we're going to spend most of our time dealing with problems involving some sort of constant acceleration. And we sort of introduced, we sort of met what 
what happens when you're dealing with a constant acceleration problem already. But let's, I want to, I want to do this sort of in like chart form because charts are awesome. All right, so imagine that we have some object, object that's moving and we're going to look at the object at a couple different time intervals. So one se zero seconds, one second, two seconds, three seconds, four seconds. All right, we're going to look at um, the velocity now. So I, I just want to write down the velocity. Assume that, assume that the object starts with a velocity of zero meters per second and that it's accelerating at three... Oops, Three meters per second squared. Okay, so I just want to beat home the point of what is acceleration. So what is the velocity of the object at time equals one second? Huh? Three meters per second. That's what I thought you said. All right, what about at two seconds? Six meters per second. Three seconds? Nine meters per second, right? So you see the pattern, it's increasing by three every second, and then so that leads us to 12 meters per second. All right, so just like I said a few minutes ago, when we have an object that's accelerating, its velocity is changing by that much every second. All right, what about its position? It starts at zero meters. All right, what's its position at one second? Now, let me, let me take a step back. What do you think the, how, how is the um, position going to behave as a function of time? Is it going to be A, constant? Is it going to be linear? Is it going to be nonlinear? Nonlinear. Non awesome. Nice. That was very quick. That, that was the fastest you guys answered a question so far. I love it. All right, that means you you're using your brains. All right, so good. It's not, it's not going to be linear. So let's, let's try to figure out what it'll look like. All right, so what is the, uh, what is the position at one second? All right, it's three meters. Why? Forget about the acceleration now. Just look at the velocity. At one second, it, it's moving three meters per second. All right, so after one second, it's moved three meters. At two seconds, it's moving six meters per second. So it's going to move another six meters or something like that. All right, so now it's going to be at position nine meters. And now at, at t equals three seconds, it's moving nine meters per second. So it's going to be at 18. And then 18 plus 12, that's 30. All right. So this is clearly nonlinear, but it does have a specific shape. Do you know what, the beha what this behavior looks like? Parabola. Oh, I'm sorry? Parabola. All right, parabola. And parabolic, it goes as t squared, all right? So it's quadratic. So we know then that the behavior of x as a function of t, t is, qu is a quadratic. We know that velocity as a function of t for constant acceleration is linear. So let's write down some equations. So tell me an equation for velocity as a function of time. Good. All right, so the, the, the initial velocity plus the acceleration times time. It, it sort of follows the same pattern as up here, right? x naught plus vo times t. This, again, looks like our original definition for acceleration. If I rearrange and solve for a, you get v minus v naught divided by t. So that's just our original definition. All right? Again, this came from the same place as this came from. I know that if I integrate a naught, which, I'm just, which I just write as a in general. So if we integrate a dt, all right, a is a constant. What do I get? I get a times t plus some constant, which we just call v naught. All right, so that's where that comes from. <clears throat> All right, cool. So now we just need to figure out uh, a functional form for position as a function of time. Well, velocity and position, we already know if we take the integral of velocity, we're going to get position. So let's, let's do that. Let's integrate v. Uh, v is a function of t. Let's, uh, let's integrate our function for v, which is just integrating v naught plus a t as, um, times dt. So what do we get here? We get v naught is just a constant, so we're going to get something like v naught times t. a t, well, a is still just a constant, but t is the thing we're integrating over, so we're going to get a 1 half a times t squared now. 
n once again plus, I guess, d, damn it. All right, so once again, we get the constant of integration. Just like before, this thing has to have the units of meters, so we're going to just call that the initial position. So our, the equation that we get is x naught plus v naught times t plus 1 half a t squared. So like we expected, this is a quadratic. The units all check out. That's our equation for position as a function of time. Now check this out. If acceleration is 0, this term goes away. And we're left with this guy, which is the same as this guy up here. So just because this is an equation for constant acceleration doesn't mean it can't be applied to our other cases of motion. And of course, the same thing here. If acceleration is 0, then what that tells us is that velocity is constant. So really, these two equations are, are pretty useful for us. They, they apply to any case of motion as long as acceleration is constant. And an acceleration of 0 is a constant acceleration. All right. So without further ado, let's write down the kinematic equations. All right, we've met this one. x is equal to x naught plus v o t plus 1 half a t squared. We've met this one. v is equal to v naught plus a times t. All right, I'm going to write down two more, and I'm not going to spend time deriving them because we've spent enough time doing that sort of thing. But you can get these by combining these two, adding and subtracting them, and also recognizing that um, the, if you have a constant acceleration, the initial and the final velocity divided by 2 is equal to the average velocity. All right, so you can learn more about this if you want to in, in section 2.4. But they come from combinations of these two and an expression for the average velocity. Plus t. And then finally, v squared is equal to v naught squared plus 2 times a times x minus x naught. All right, which sometimes you'll see is just delta x. These are our four kinematic equations that you guys are going to use quite a bit. All right, these apply for 1D, and if I turn x's into y's, you can use them in 2D. All right, so we're going to spend a few days working on solutions to these equations. All right, but these four equations will describe any motion as long as the acceleration is constant, any constant acceleration motion. So that's what we're going to focus on. 